Hi everyone, this video continues the topic of predictions from the Vertex AI registered model. I have already explored the topic of batch prediction in my last video, that's why today I will focus on online predictions. And as a quick reminder, the batch prediction is for processing accumulated data when you don't need immediate results. And online prediction is for request in response to application input or in other situations where immediate inference is needed. So without further ado, let's jump into Vertex AI to make some online predictions. All right, so before our model can be used to serve online predictions, we need to deploy it to an endpoint. And deploying a model to an endpoint associates it with a physical resources so it can serve online predictions with low latency. So let's start with creating an endpoint. So let's go to the endpoints, create an endpoint. Let's call it stroke model endpoint. Here, let's select, uh, let's leave the default settings. Let's select our model. Let's select the first version. Mm. Now we need to select minimum number of compute nodes. So we'll keep it as a one. We don't need to define a maximum. Uh, let's switch a machine type. So for these tutorial purposes, let's select the uh, smallest possible. Um, everything else we can leave on a default settings. Let's continue. Um, yeah, we can also set up model uh, monitoring, um, but let's keep it on a default settings. And uh, in order to mm, like model to be able to, to monitor a training serving SKU, we need to um, select our training data source. So I was training uh, the model based on the Vertex AI data set. So let me select it and our target column was named exactly the same as the data set. So it was just a stroke. So now we are good. And let's create an endpoint. So it will take some time. And we'll revisit that after it's finished. So after about 20 minutes, the endpoint has been created. It's ready. Let's go there. And as you can see, like there is a, like the stroke classification model and its sta status is ready. So now to find out how to make online prediction with the help of this endpoint, we'll use this sample request um, page and it shows you how to make predictions with both REST API and Python. First, I will show you how to make it with a Python language. So we need to copy and paste uh, sample code from GitHub. So let's go there. And this is basically a prediction function. So let's copy it. Let's go to Jupyter Notebook. And let's, let's paste it there. I won't be going through each and every detail of this function because this is outside of the scope of this tutorial. But all you need to know is that this function allows us to make the online prediction. So we defined our functions, uh, we imported necessary libraries, so we are all good. Of course, we'll be doing this on some kind of uh, example. So here I have my example number one, where we have our features from this model. And this is basically a dictionary where each feature is a separate key and each value is a like, um, like value of this key. So how to know how to set up your dictionary, like what kind of features, what, what kind of, like what kind of, uh, let's say type of a variable needs to be there. Because as you can see here, everywhere I have a string. So it's very easy. So let's go to the Vertex AI. Let's go to the model that is deployed on this endpoint. So we deployed the version number one. So let's go there. 
let's go to deploy and test tab and here you can see there's like test your model and here you have listed all of your you have list of all of your features that you have in the model and also the type that is expected uh, for the predictions so right now despite the fact that i also had like uh, numeric variables in my uh, training data set everything is required to be a um, string so let's keep it that way so back to the back to the jupyter notebook let's define this example all right so so we defined this example and now let's use this example with this uh, predict function so there are five things we need to define this is project id endpoint id and endpoint id we can find with yeah it's it's basically listed here but it's also listed if you go to sample request it's also already listed here then we have a location so i have Euro europe west one instance dictionary so this is our example number one and api endpoint so the default one is us central one but i just had to switch it into europe west one so let's try to make a prediction and as you can see we got our response we have a model id which made the prediction and also the prediction so we we got two classes in our model zero and one and we have a score for each each of the class so it's very important that it shows us the model id because we we can have multiple models deployed to a one endpoint so i guess we would like to know which model made a prediction so right now you can see that the um, stroke probability for, for this particular person is rather low so now let's try to see if the model can predict something with like let's say higher probability that we would say so let's increase the age let's check some let, let's yeah change some um, diseases there to be present um, let's increase the average glucose level and also let's increase the bmi so um, okay so previously we had like a, roughly 2% of a chance of a stroke. And with this increased, let's say example, let's see what will be the output. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it increased to the 18%. So as we can see, um, yes, this, this actually works. So right now I showed you how to make the online prediction with a Python and in the next section of this tutorial, I will show you how to do this with the REST API. To make a prediction with REST API, we'll again use help of this sample request page. So first, we need to make sure that we have the Google Cloud SDK installed. I won't be going through this because this is outside of the scope of this video, as well as the second step, which is the authentication. Uh, if you type uh, G Cloud authentication. Um, you will find multiple articles, but you can always use the official Google Cloud documentation. I will make sure to link it in the video description. But generally, this process will be very similar to what I did in my first video. It was creating the service account and then linking that service account with a here you, you will basically have to uh, make a service account, uh, do, download a JSON key, and then uh, use this command to indicate where this JSON key is located. But as I'm using the uh, Jupyter Notebook hosted in the Vertex AI, it makes uh, things a bit more simpler for me. So we'll jump straight into the step number four which is creating environment variables to hold our endpoint 
and project ID and our JSON object that we'll make a prediction for. So let's do it. Uh, first, let me just copy and paste there those uh, variables and let me open the terminal. And let's define those variables. Uh, but here I need to change one thing. I need to add there a path. So first let's make a prediction for a um, single item. Uh, so let me show you how the uh, properly formatted uh, JSON should uh, look like for, for this purpose. So it's it's a bit different from the Python version because in the Python we just only had like this dictionary, but here we also need to have like those instances, um, like um, instances key on the top. Uh, okay, so let me copy path to this file and let me paste it as an input data file. Now let me copy all of those variables and let us define those in the terminal. All right. And then like we just need to execute the request. So also let's copy that. And as you can see, like this curl request uses our project ID, endpoint ID, and at the end, like the input data file. So once again, let's execute it. And as you can see, we have our prediction. So again, like this uh, gives us also the model ID, a model ID name, a model version ID, and like the ID of the model itself. Um, so uh, it gives us a bit more information uh, compared when we were using a predict fu function uh, from the Python. So this was for a single instance. And now let's try to do it for the multiple items. So let me first show you how this file looks like. So let us open this in editor. So right now I, I just added like another instance to this, uh, to this JSON file. So now let me copy its path. Uh, so we'll just change this. All right, let us define this variable once again and let us run the same command as previously and now we should get the two predictions. So yeah, as you can see, we got the uh, two predictions. So this is basically how you make a prediction with the REST API. When talking about endpoints and online predictions in Vertex AI, this tutorial wouldn't be complete if I wouldn't mention the fact that you can deploy multiple models to the same endpoint. So we start with the following situation. We have trained our model for a project, deployed it to Vertex AI, and it's serving all incoming requests from our application. But as the time goes, we are collecting more and more data and we decided to train a new model. But we don't want to switch the model straight away as we want to make a gradual change and test the new model on a small amount of traffic in the production environment. So we can do it by deploying the second model to the same endpoint and redirecting part of the incoming traffic to this new model. So here we can see that, for example, our model number one, which is the initial model, will still get the 90% of the incoming traffic but we also have the second model, which will be tested on the smaller sample of the incoming traffic, which there is like the 10%. So as we are on our endpoints tab, we can go to the details of the endpoint, which we created previously. And we can see that currently we have just one model deployed and it's taking all traffic. Let's change it. So let's deploy another model we leave the endpoint name as it is. And now we just need to add another model. So let's add the same model, but just a different version. So version number two. 
So let's say we want to have a 50-50 split. So this model needs to have 50% of the traffic. Let's change the machine to be exactly the same. And model number one also needs to have reduced number of incoming traffic. So it will also have 50. So now we have two models, both of them add up to 100%. So we can update the endpoint. So now we just need to wait a few moments. And after some time, the second version of the model has also been successfully deployed. And as you can see, right now we have like 50-50 traffic split. Now let's talk a little bit more about the monitoring and the alerts that can be generated by the model. So here you can see that this first model has already 10 alerts. So let's see what this is all about. Let's click the enabled, go to the alerts, and you can see that we have training serving SKU alert. And training serving SKU means that the training data distribution is different from the distribution of the data which is incoming to the model. And in this situation, this is caused by the fact that when I was doing predictions for this tutorial, I was using two examples over and over again. So that's why those alerts has been generated. So overall, this is a great feature of an endpoint that it can generate the alerts, which are basically the early indicators or early red flags that something bad is happening with your model or with your incoming data. Last thing that I wanted to briefly mention is the existence of the performance and resource usage tabs. Here you can see multiple useful charts that help you to keep an eye on what is happening with your endpoint. In general, you should use those two tabs together with monitoring feature to make sure that your deployed models are working properly. And that would be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.